So, you're probably thinking, what the heck is Eichmann Go? Well, in my short botched history of Eichmann Go, or Mugen, or whatever you want to call it, um, basically, Mugen was made for DOS. Uh, eventually, they were working on a Windows version, which was private, which got leaked, which made Win Mugen. Um, in parallel to Mac Mugen, which I don't think ever saw the light of day. Um, and then from there, we went to Mugen 1.0 and then 1.1, and then that's the end of the line for Mugen. On the flip side, we had uh, Eichmann, which was a modified Win Mugen, which the source code was never released, so people reverse engineered it and hacked the engine to get access to the codes. And they basically added Netplay to Mugen, and that was Eichmann. Um, there were several other versions of Mugen hack that was released, like the uh, Sophia Cat version, where you could do four on four uh, simultaneous or eight on eight simultaneous, which was complete chaos and lagged almost every computer at the time. Now it's fine, but back then it was just the most like craziest, amazing thing you can ever see. Um, and there were also some other Mugen hacks I recall, by I don't recall actually. But they, there was something else out there, aside from the... Wait, I think I remember. It was called Shugundo. And that was another hack in Mugen, which I don't remember what the purpose of it was. But that was, you know, that was that. So skip ahead till now. I want to say roughly two, maybe three years ago. Um, some group of amazing people decided to remake uh, or, you know, convert... Eichmann using the Google Co uh, Google Go coding language into Eichmann Go. And what did it entail? It pretty much entailed updating every possible system within Mugen. Uh, the graphics engine, which is like the biggest thing you can upgrade for Mugen. Because Mugen was made back in 99. I mean, you know, I had a Windows 95 back in 99 running Mugen and I barely had colors and they would I had like a roster of 22 characters and if I had 23 characters it would just wouldn't load it would crash I couldn't play mp3s I had to play MIDI files and it's it's come a long way so now I can go aside from being a massive upgrade of the graphics engine they took it all the features from the Sophia cat uh, hack and the Shigundo hack and everything people wanted for years and put it into one engine simple to use and easy to do um, before I get into the game and stuff if you go to the, uh, the GitHub um, one of the things here that Eichmann adds which it says Eichmann goes a remake of Eichmann um, it adds a, a crap ton of new state controllers I've, I don't know any of this stuff like I've never really looked into this stuff or read it but the things that stuck out to me were dizzy points, hit scaling, life bar actions. We've never had that before. Red life, that's a King of Fighters thing or SNK game thing. We never had that. Um, text, you can have text display, tagging in and out. That's something everyone's wanted for years. And there's other applications to add tag to your characters. But this is built into the engine. You don't have to do anything. And then there's new other uh, search specials like auto guard no air jumps no crouch no break I'm not sure what that is um, no jump no stand like this is if you wanted to make a character like say a ship you know a shooting ship or something you have a jump code in there that kind of gets in your way of making the ship you know move up this would disable the jump you could disable stand and crouch and have full control of it using other methods new codes for help uh, helpers Hit def has new things, Xbox have new things, projectiles, and the triggers are like there's so many new triggers here. It's ridiculous. Aside from this, like we have complete control of scaling and everything and rotation. So now I'm just gonna load up the uh Eichmann Go. <clears throat> they use the default Mugen um screen pack with this, which is great. Like it's super nostalgic. Like, that's how I remember it, you know? This is the screen I remember, minus the logo. But from here, you pretty much have access to 
single player mode, which, you know, it's just single player. Team arcade, which is simultaneous up to four players, but you could actually set that to more in the options, I believe. Tag up to four players, turns up to four players, and ratio, which I really hate these icons that they used. I would like to change that, which I, you can. I mean, everything's changeable. It's Mugen. You know, you can decide how you want to do your matches and everything. It, it's just so much customization. Team co-op for two players. Yeah, versus mode. You know, 1v2, team versus co-op. Quick match, I guess quick match just randomizes. Network play. Now, network play is funny. Network play only works if the two computers are on the same network. Ideally, two computers in the same room or same office or same... Uh, same Wi-Fi pretty much you just have to be in the same Wi-Fi network for it to work um, the ways around this which used to be a, a website or application called Tungle which apparently is like adware now um, but Hamachi Hamachi Hibachi Hibachi's food Hamachi I think I can't remember what it's called but there are apps now that you can use to virtualize a network for you and someone else and you can both play against each other I will upload a video later on how to get that working with my buddy ultra fatality you have practice you got mission mode which is completely new time attack survival survival co-op you got watch mode you can watch a computer you can do a random test you can replay which I don't even know how replay works honestly and then you get to options this is brand new game settings you got difficulty. You can always, you can always, you know, difficulty. Actually, this healthy, yeah, difficulty works now, for lack of a better term. Everything scales according to how it should scale. You know, if you set it to one, it's going to be a nice steamroll. If you set it to to eight, it's going to be an avalanche against you. I guess five is default. Uh, time, life. You can always change this stuff. Uh, these are new. Credits are new also. So when you're playing arcade mode, you actually have ten credits. Instead of like playing arcade and you could just continue infinitely, you have 10 credits. If you run out of 10 credits because you keep losing, you're done. It's over. Uh, you can, I guess, randomize your palette. Same thing here. AI ramping, quick continue, you know, auto guard. Dizzy, you can uh, turn on and off. Guard break, you turn on and off. Red life, on and off. Team duplicates, I don't know what that means team life share if they want to give one life bar for the team I, w I wouldn't do it the personally power share and you can give them their own separate power bars for once for many years in team battles characters had one power bar to share if your character was AI controlled and they were hogs like uh, evil Ken evil Ryu evil Sakura evil Dan ogre like all those you know evil Shoto characters they would charge up and use their energy gains like crazy then you have tag settings. Uh, okay, you got simultaneous settings, turn settings, ratio settings. I haven't even looked at this stuff before, but it looks crazy in depth. You have video settings now, so you could change the resolution of your game almost on the fly. Uh, almost on the fly, as in like once you pick a setting, you have to close Mugen and reopen it for it to take effect. I'm using uh, just a, a sub 4.3 resolution screen. I mean, it goes up to full 1080p. And it scales everything accordingly. Your stages scale, your screen pass scales, everything scales because the graphics have been so much better. Full screen, don't want that. V-Sync, MSAA, like these are settings you don't expect on, you know, Mugen. And it does make a difference. Shaders, I'm not sure how shaders work in Mugen sense. It would be like adding a filter over the screen, like say a CTR screen or something. MSA, I'm not sure how that works either, but it's it's really nice. Actually, I think I might know how that works. Audio settings, like never before. Input settings, kind of the same, except the added uh, D and W in menu at the bottom. Joystick, same thing. Engine settings, players. See right here, you can set your players to four, two, or eight, or six. You can enable, disable, debug max helpers you can set this stuff from here now instead of going to your your uh what was it your video file which is amazing uh you can change your port for your um net play i i leave it default i don't mess with it and then like going into the game as you see in the other video you can have oh god 
you can have multiple eh let's put fingers multiple characters on the same slot like this is amazing aside from this you can have animated big portraits or animated small portraits which I'll show you how to do actually just for uh, shits and giggles so going into the data folder we go to the system that def file I have my computer set up so when I open a def file it opens notepad automatically if you right click um, the file and click open with you'll see open with here and you choose another app it'll let you pick an option which you want to be the default I set it like this so um, so pretty much this is the the new system that def you could copy a screen pack from Win Mugen, Mugen 1.1, 1.0, and bring it over to Eichmann Go, and it'll work. I feel like 99% of the time it'll work. I'm just making up numbers. However, by copying and pasting it, you're removing majority of Eichmann Go's codes, which you're losing out on, really. Like, you have so much more codes here for everything that says Eichmann features all Eichmann. These are the, co uh, the display fonts and text for uh, connecting. These are the game menus, sub menus. If you leave a blank like this, it disables it. I'm leaving it all default for now because this is my uh, video uh, Eichmann. The title screen stuff. This is new, the info box. You have control of the info box now instead of before. It was kind of just whatever you know whatever Mugen had and your fonts had to fit in and everything you have full control of it now and the fonts too well you always did but still so now all right, we're going here to portrait right instead of portrait using sprite 9000 let's use animation zero animation zero is your character stand sprite so that's gonna be that and the big portrait it's going to be uh, and um, actually, I, let me do one thing before. Where is that? Here we go. There. Just in case, I can always go back. M equals. So I let me see. For the big portrait, let's go with um, their basic light punch. Two hundred. Every character has a two hundred. You know name there's also a stage select which displays on the screen between your characters um, so for all your stages what we had to do in the past was a font trick which only worked for full games but now with this uh, with this your stages need a sprite on group 9000 index 0 I think I think it should be it should be uh, and then it'll display like this it'll just display in this area and this is a whole border that you have full control of you could change the border in the animation or you know make it round or whatever you want to do but the point is we have this access now which we never had before and it's amazing um, what was I doing? okay so I didn't save this that's why nothing changed on the, the select screen there um, yeah see right here okay so stage portraits 9001 you can pick the scale, the positioning, everything for it. Team menus, blah, blah, blah. This is for the ratio stuff. More stuff. Okay, versus screen. This, you can have more portraits on the versus screen. Yeah, you can have like their stand sprites there or something if you want. And I guess if you do this, you could also have the big portrait too. Let's see. Let's take this off. Let's see how that works. And I never looked in this file completely, honestly, to tell you the truth. I'm going through it uh, now with you. Uh, continue screen. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, look, see. P2 state continue. I guess you can have like a different states or animations for it. Yeah, look at that. So I guess if it's yes, it's either 50. 510 or 180 I guess like 180 is the taunt and the 170 is the lows animation so that's what they're gonna play so if you pick no like uh if you pick yes like yeah ah see and even the counter and everything 
the animation. This is a massive animation that's in here by default. Uh, game over screen, continue background, portraits. We had that for years. Wait, no, we didn't. Okay, victory screen. Yeah, victory screen we did have. Okay, it's just I thought of something else. And the credits. We have survival screen, which all we've had. Eichmann go, the boss rush results. The options menu is completely customizable now. Replay is here. Pa oh, the pause menu. This is something brand new that gives you so many options and stuff. Track mode, blah, blah, blah. Ranking, the ranking is pretty cool how we could just, you know, rank up everything. Use the font that you tell it to use and it'll display correctly, nice and neat. The game keeps track of a score now. It's a score system built into it. Uh, let's see. And the warning, which I don't know what this is. Uh, save it. Now we go into Icon Go. And as you can see, their stand animation is their small portraits, and their big anim uh, the big portrait is doing something up there. I can't I can't tell honestly. Okay, it is working because look, when I switch to Akuma, he's doing animation. When I switch to Ryu. He's not. Who knows why? Anyways, let's try Akuma. Okay, I don't know where that small portrait thing I mess with is, but you pretty much see it's like it's just amazing. This is the pause menu right here. Like we've never had this. Like you had to like code this in separately as a helper that would pause the whole environment, that would display, and you could move it around and everything. I personally could never get that to work. In this game, it's built in. You literally press, what is it? No, nope. you press escape on your keyboard and it opens this up. You can reset your keys here. You know, you can see your command list, which Akuma does not have. Um, you can, let's change character, go to Kung Fu Man. Uh, command list, ah. You get the whole command list, which is a nice file that you can edit and everything. Oh, look at this, you have everything here and it's separate from the game engine. It reads it, but it's separate from it. It's just, I think Go is, honestly, the best step forward for Mugen that we've ever had that we needed for a long time. And it's still being updated to this day, which is amazing. Um, and here, let me show you the move list thing. <clears throat> Looks like gibberish, and you know what? It probably is. It's not gibberish. Um, these are, what are these? There's like HTML color codes. If you like copy this and paste this here, that's the color. And the hex is right there. As you move it around, whatever color you want, you get the hex value. Replace the hex value right here, <clears throat> and that word's gonna be that. For me, I would have this as red for supers, blue for specials, and green for throws or you know something. You get your text name. Well, this is like title, okay? Title. You get your command name, and then the command, uh, the little glyphs to show. In this case, uh, the glyph is underscore. I mean, not under, yeah, underscore. Uh, quarter down forward, which is down, down forward, forward motion. And then the up, uh, up arrow X means the X button. So like, say this one here, quarter down forward, and 2P means two punch, any punch. Uh, let's see. Okay, this one here, the weak kung fu knee, is forward, forward, a, light kick. And the super is down forward, down forward punch, down back, down back punch. And then here, uh, he's using the they use the uh, HTML to change the the, va the color of how much gauge it takes. It takes a thousand, which is one gauge. You know, so that's like really cool. So now the the font is white, but then the number it takes is like I guess blue or whatever color that is. And you know, you could just copy paste this in any character, change it up accordingly, and you got a move list all of a sudden. You know, like all that guessing is it's out the window. I think that's where I'll end this video with that little demonstration of how it works. Um, if there's anything with the stages, I do not think there are any changes. There probably are, honestly. 
but it might not be something I will see here. I think these stages are pretty straightforward, and um, yeah, I don't think there's a there's no doc folder here. You'd have to use like the um, the website to see if they changed anything. But I believe there is a there's a lot more stage interactivity. Like there's a trigger, so you know what stage you're on and everything. Also, the zoom feature from Mugen 1.1, the beta, uh, that was not complete works here. You could use zoom, and you can use all kinds of other things. Like there's some of the other codes that I kind of just guess around with scaling, and it works fine. It works amazingly fine. Um, because of the graphics engine, uh, if you, I think when you have MSAA turned on in your settings and you're messing with graphics, I think it will uh, blur the images a bit. This is a sneak peek. I guess I'm working on her. We'll take a look at this little tidbit here. See her size? She's like freaking massive. Oh, Onion Skinner, just so you can see. She's massive, All right? Uh, okay, and look at this little dust effect. It's tiny, but it's a high res, high color image where the transparency is built onto it. This is not an indexed image. It has no index. The whole dust effect, all of them, are just high quality images. <clears throat> so now, in this Eichmann, when you use it, this is an old image. When you use it and you use them, they blur filter up perfectly Fight. and by the way this is like how the sprites came I found this on the internet but you see how they look look at that dust it blurs perfectly it looks perfect uh, let's see yeah there's a bit of uh, loss there but I mean considering what it is this is a, a this is like supposed to be the size of her like this area like between her feet but when scaled up the quality is blurred so it looks perfect for what it is for dust even for hit sparks and hit effects actually like I could have <clears throat> if you anyone remembers back in the day CVS 2 was the uh, the you know the new the fresh things in sliced bread and everybody had CVS 2 hit sparks the problem was, which wasn't really a problem, it was just nit it's the nitpicking. It was one set of hit sparks that people rotate around at 360, so every time you hit, it would look like a different hit spark. In this case, if I render them at a higher quality, higher grade, um, I won't have to do that. I can literally just have one animation that I rotate in engine. And this is Fighter Factory 3, by the way. This is also a texture. Um, so yeah, look. This is the hit spark. This is the spark behind the character. It's two frames. And I have a scaling using, you know, scale codes. But this rotation here, this 10 degree, 20 degree rotation, I'm doing in the animation. You could do this in Mugen 1.1, but I can do this here. And because of that, these little pixels, it smooths them out because of the new graphics engine, which looks phenomenal. Let me see if I can get a, a action of it. Fight. No, right there. See, this is the uh, this is this one. E maybe this one. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you see, it's pixelated here, but in the engine, it's smoothing out. This is the MSA in action right here. So it looks amazing. Another thing which is uh, they use in Mugen 1.1 is uh, interpolation. Now, this is gonna be kind of interesting. So say I want this to fade out. What I had to do in the pra uh, past, and you know what, I'll make a whole separate video on this just so you know, you can find this one quickly. Uh, a video on interpolation. So, say I wanted to make this fade out, right? It's a single frame. I wanted to make it fade out, but, you know, I, it's not an animation. It's a single frame. What do I do? So, I would have to, like, make a shit ton of these frames like this. 
You'll have to look like this. Uh, an AS like 256, 256. Okay, I can't count. But it, it used to look like this. And I would have to change the value of the, of how much, uh, I guess illumination would be. I'm not sure what the correct term is for this, honestly. But I would have to pretty much tell it how many frames dimmer to go. As you can see, I control it here with the numbers. But one of the like the best things you can do now is use in, uh, interpolation blend. So basically, for seven ticks, this image above interpretation interpolate eh, interpolate blend is going to transition from this frame to this frame. And what's the difference in it? This frame has nothing. So from this to this in seven ticks. Too fast? Let me show you again. Here, let's go with 30 ticks. Okay, how about that? Let's, let's kick it up to 180. See? It's interpolating the in-between frames. There's no guesswork. It's just the way it is now. It just works easily. And that's why you should move to, yeah, Eichmann Go. You definitely should. I would strongly recommend it. If Electbyte ever came back and upgraded the Mugen engine, you know, then we'll have a little competition to see what's better. But currently Electbyte is dead. They've been dead for years. I've fallen off the Mugen scene because of it. I don't keep up with the forms or anything anymore. But I've lost my drive. Eichmann Go kind of revitalizing to me like I'm seeing things I've always wanted to see and everything and I'm a, I love fighting games so it's just nice that I'm able to see these things again like this um, so I'll end this video here I'll make a quick video on the interpolation uh, thanks for watching